Good morning, good morning, good morning again. Another glorious and wonderful and beautiful day to know the goodness of our Lord and to learn more about his ways, not just to learn, but to walk in them. And there was something that I was reminded of yesterday from a, uh, a natural, you know, they didn't claim to be Christian, but it was a psychology, like a clip on psychology tips in a sense. And they talked about... Uh, what they said is ruminating with others, or in other words, it was complaining with others and how sometimes when you get together, in fact, I remember a, a friend of mine, he would teach Chinese to some, to people in China, actually, he'd speak, excuse me, he was in China, he spoke Chinese, he's taught English to people in China, and he said how he would, uh, to get sort of an icebreaker, he would ask people what they really dislike. Because people can really talk about what they don't like. It's harder for them to talk about what they like sometimes. And that is an issue in life. It seems to be easy to talk about what you don't like, especially if other people share that, you know, this common gripe over whatever. And it seems like it's easy to throw a gripe up there. But that uh, this psychology advice was saying how it backfires on you. Because although you think it feels great, you know, it's almost like this little high of, hey, we all, you know, we all hate it. I don't know when our our clothes get caught on the door handle when we're walking by. Arr, we hate that. Oh, we all hate this politician. Now yeah, we talk about him and look at that nose that he has and stuff like that or whatever. You know, you, you get together and it, it almost gives you a little high, you know, like a sugar rush. But now you're training yourself. You're wiring your brain to complain. So then the focus or the, the recognition of gratitude is, in a sense, decreased. You've hurt yourself by complaining for the sake of the common good, so to speak. Well, God has been teaching us this for a long time. I'm glad that, that uh, psychology, I'll say, is caught up. I'm glad that there's people repeating these things because we need some things repeated again and again. He said in Philippians 2.14, to do all things without grumbling or disputing, or other translations say complaining or disputing. Do all things without complaining. Sometimes you think, there's no way I can do that. Well, this was Paul speaking, but Paul was speaking by the unction of the Holy Spirit. Do all things without grumbling or disputing so that you will prove yourselves to be blameless and innocent children of God above reproach in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you appear as lights in the world. Then in Ephesians 4.29, <clears throat> he said, Let no unwholesome word proceed from your mouth, or corrupt communication proceed from your mouth, but only such as is good for edification according to the need, so that it will give grace to those who hear. Don't complain. Don't dispute. You know, that's like... Uh, picking fights in a sense, and don't let any unwholesome, unholy, grumbly word proceed from your mouth. Philippians 4.4 4 then, he said, rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say rejoice. So we're not complaining. Don't gather together and, and uh, train yourself to complain. Train yourself to find the wrong things. You know, it's one thing to identify an error or identify a uh, a potential for improvement. It's another thing to wallow around in the the griping about a problem and you're not even providing a solution, you know. And then first Thessalonians four or five, sixteen through eighteen. Rejoice always. Rejoice always. Always. Pray without ceasing. That means constantly rejoicing. Even when the economy looks bad, even when there's inflation, even when there's some corruption going on. Even when your sports team, you're in all the greatest football team in history, loses. Even when they look horrible or when the, the ref makes a bad call. Rejoice always. We're not rejoicing over the bad call, but I'm rejoicing. Pray without ceasing. It's a good time to pray too. In everything, give thanks. In everything, be thankful. I'll say in everything, be grateful. Have an attitude of gratitude all the time. For this is the will of God for you in Christ Jesus. And then in Ephesians 5, 17, he said, "Then So then, do not be foolish. Don't be a fool. I pity the fool. Don't be a fool. 
That was a bit of Mr. T's rendition. But understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine. Don't get overloaded with the uh, intoxicating ways of the world. For that is dissipation. But be filled with the Spirit. Be being filled with the Spirit. Constantly being filled with the Spirit. Doing what? Speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. That is uh, quite the opposite of ruminating about things you don't like. Singing and making melody with your heart to the Lord. Always giving thanks for all things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to God, even the Father. Always being thankful to God for everything he does, because everything he does is good. Amen. Be blessed.